Welcome, and today I want to continue our little journey in San Francisco. And you know, I didn't even want to do the last video on San Francisco, but I just keep being pulled back to this scenario for some reason. You know, it's just absolutely astounding that this city is built in 1850. What they tell us is that this fire killed 3,000 people. And it was rebuilt. But what is so baffling is that it looks like everyone in this city was wiped out. I mean, you know, there's, there's nothing left. There's nowhere to even be. I mean, where did everyone go? They seem to leave that out. There's nothing. There's nowhere for anyone to to hang out. Now, I want to look at these photos from 1850. I did a search and wanted to see if there were any photos from 1850 because if you remember my last video, there were a thousand people in 1849. A thousand people. So I said, okay, let's look at pictures from 1850. And it took me a few different places, but here's one for example. Now this is from 1854. 1854. And what they tell us is that this is the Roman Catholic Orphan Asylum and the St. Patrick's Church. And pretty interesting and pretty aged. But again, we could give them the benefit of the doubt, you know, that they, these were, this picture that we're seeing, these are the first thousand people. But, you know, I'm sure if we turn this camera to the right or left, we would see a lot more, you know, just in this little image that we're seeing, there's probably a thousand people. And we know San Francisco is a lot bigger than this little slice, you know, for a settling 1,000 people you know, really amazing architecture. And back here, it's almost looking castle-like on this hill. Really amazing. So, 1883. So, you know, less than 15 years later, we have the Knights of Templar Parade on Market Street in 1883. So, again, look at these beautiful buildings. And just the style of town, you know, to imagine in 15 years that they threw these babies up, you know, gold miners. And I'm not sure what's going on back here. I mean, really interesting. Look at this building with uh, what look like holes in it. And again, you know... I got a lot of comments in my last video about, you know, were those photos before the World's Fair? And just to be sure, you know, that, that again piqued my curiosity to come in and look. And sure enough, we do see these images pre-World Fair, even right here. This is pre-World Fair. And, you know, on, only less than 15 years after the inception of the city do we see this amazing, amazing architecture. I mean, look at this, look at this ornamentation around this entryway with this horse statue. And, I mean, this is, this is really something else. And, you know, when you search San Francisco in Wikipedia, you are not going to get these photos. You know, they're not going to show you such things. And again, they're going to show you the 1915 World's Fair and tell you that the buildings were temporary, but this is on Market Street. This has nothing to do with the World's Fair. Okay, look at this. <laughs> look at this. E pluribus unum. This, uh, you know, what I'm going to say is a uh, more of a Tartarian emblem than any San Franciscan ornamentation and I don't know if this still exists but this is absolutely amazing you know I've never I've never seen anything like this around an arch this is really special 
And this is the 1886 Grand Army of the Republic. The Triumphal Arch. So, you know, I mean, this is, this is the most amazing city ever. And so here they're telling us uh, 1890, celebrating California's 40th birthday. This looks a lot older. You know, the weathering on this building, it almost looks like, uh, you know, pollution or soot. 1905, a little action on the streets. You know, so this would be 50 years. This is still pre-World Fair. And just to show again the build-out in 50 years. 50 years. Uh, this one is from 1906. And, well, look at this little owl here. And, you know, I wanted to comment on some of these shadows that I was noticing. You know, I mean, this... This is an early morning shadow. You know, and there's still, you know, here's some people walking. And this would be in 1901. But look at this amazing, look at this overhang architecture with columns overhanging columns i mean really special 1860s a view of market street and again 1860 so this is a great one this depicts what they are telling us 10 years of development has taken place again in just a little sliver that we can see here 10 years the gold miners come in and the truth is is you know this is not as impressive as a lot of the architecture that we're just looking at in the front but if we look in the back here I mean we have cathedrals and spires you know what is this a two three four blocks over another cathedral and you know back here I mean look at this not what you would expect for ten years of development again 1860s here is these onion domes that we saw in another picture and here 1860 so this verifies this picture that I was showing earlier this verifies that this onion dome was already here here it is now let's jump back over here and look at it from this angle so this was a photo in 1877, they told us. This beautiful panoramic that we get of the whole city. 1877. So this was only, you know, 15 years after the inception of San Francisco. So in 15 years, the mainstream narrative tells us that all of this was built. And now this photo is showing us that in 10 years, in 10 years, most of what we're seeing was already here. I guess this is only proving the point that much more. Now this is getting ridiculous, you know, that we would have, have this in 10 years. And, you know, 15 years later, it looks like this. Although I really don't see very much difference between this and this. It's just a different angle. We're seeing a lot less in this photograph. And when we look at it in this photograph, you know, it's just absolutely amazing. Like we just saw, the photos of 1860 were, you know, the city is built out and beautiful, but then we have this. I mean, the whole city is mud flooded, completely mud flooded. And what they've done is just build these boardwalks along, you know, the sidewalk so people can just get around in this mud. And in some cases, they've actually built boardwalks here. It appears as if it's a wooden road, like a boardwalk sidewalk and a boardwalk and so, you know, this town really looks like it's abandoned in this 1877 photo. And, you know, I know they want to tell us that these photos were taken early in the morning. And here we do see a few horses. But 
What we can tell with this photo is the time of day that it is. And now here if you look at this pole and this shadow, we can see that this is not a long shadow. This is not a morning or sunset kind of photo. This is about 10 or 11 o'clock. You know, depending if this was winter, this could be high noon based on this shadow. So yeah, this is your city at high noon. Again, no long shadows. Look at all the poles. And this one is pretty clear what time of day this is. And, you know, for a city built out like this, you know, I mean, it should be a mess. There should be a mess of people. And so already the narrative doesn't add up. The fact that, you know, it should be built out like this in 10 years. But then, there's no people. There's no people. Here we have a horse. You know, really unusual. You know, and, and you know, at the very least we would expect to see, uh, you know, wispy, ghost-like uh, silhouettes all over the place from an open exposure photograph. But we don't see that. You know, and certainly not everybody would be moving. There would be a lot of standing around, you know, a lot of horses, especially that we can prove without a shadow of a doubt that this is not an early morning picture. Not at all. If this was early morning, this shadow would continue and perhaps even cast into the side of the building some. But we don't see that. Not at all. So let's continue. The cliff house. You know, this cliff house can be seen in many photos. 1894 San Francisco Midwinter International Exposition. So already I believe that this is the same one of the same photos that we were seeing for the World's Fair in 1915 but apparently it was actually built earlier than that. So again we have a discrepancy in the narrative. And you know what happened here? Rare pics of the palace. You know this baby looks like it was hit by a bomb. 1880s. So this is really interesting. 1928 and versus modern times. You know so this Look at these steps. I mean, what was this? Was this a pyramid? You know, this looks very South American to me almost. And certainly very glorious and very, very palace-like. And now it's just a ruin, almost unrecognizable. And how interesting, you know, how such things might be found all over the place. And here's a case where it was actually better preserved, but it has absolutely been mud flooded. And who knows what was up here at one point. Clearly there was probably some structure. Really amazing, all these ruins. So here's a boat that they discovered. San Francisco was built on an abandoned and buried ships of the gold rush. So now that, you know, they're actually telling us that, you know, the gold rush <laughs> had massive ships and that somehow they got buried. So, you know, here's another proof of, you know, some kind of massive flood here that has actually buried ships. And now they're excavating it. And finally, I just wanted to comment on this photo that I showed in my last video. And so here in 1915, they're showing us the size of the trees. You know, as massive as these columns are, you know, these trees are potentially 75 year old trees again adding to the age and 75 years before this photo again would make it you know 1960 ish and here you can see now they've grown to the top all the way to the top of this column and even the block work and the statues on top of the column if this is modern day it took the tree another hundred years to grow from this to this and that's still you know I would say that that's still the same tree 
that one right there so if it took it a hundred years to grow from here to a little bit higher than it 1915 let's just say to 2015 hundred years to grow from here to here which tells me that when we're looking at this picture this is a hundred year old tree you know because it took it a hundred another hundred years to grow and what an amazing tree actually that tells us that this is a 200 year old tree I mean if we're to believe anything and again this I was baffled by not only you know these old images of the fair in 1915 but also in Chicago in the World's Fair of 1893 that we have palm trees and cacti cacti in Chicago and old cacti you know and again growing up in Arizona I know the saguaro cactus and I know the amount of time it takes for a saguaro cactus to grow and the idea that they would bring in a bunch of saguaro cactus full-grown saguaro cacti with arms and each arm you know take just an arm takes a hundred years to grow and we have these cacti all over in Chicago which would not support this type of cactus and equally here you know in San Francisco while looking at these artificial coastlines you know it got me thinking about you know everything that we see is this little corner artificial and is this the remnants of something perhaps that was destroyed as it looks like all around here I mean it sure looks like it and now you know there's a parking lot you know was there a grand castle here because I'm seeing a lot of stuff under here let's take off the roads and we'll see it for what it is so now these there are no roads on right now and yet you can see that these are just poking right through and there's a lot more you know this whole mountainside here is covered with what look to be artificial remnants you know a lot of right angles and unnatural looking things under here that have just become overgrown but to me these are clearly traces of older civilizations this is really interesting the perspective just notice these tiny little people right here and it's not that they're tiny people and these are giants it's perspective I mean that's how massive this is you know from these people back here to these people is a huge distance enough to make them look half the size and a quarter size of these people just to give you a perspective of how massive this is and forgive me I should be clicking on these it wasn't much better resolution anyway mate you know it, it brought me to this grand theory really that uh, you know, before, you know, you, you had the angels and the giants that we talk about in the Bible, and, you know, perhaps everything was giant, and, and you had this splitting, and this good and this bad of, of these giants. And later, you know, half of them are, are wiped out, and, and yet they had a lot of building. And, and, and this, this, you know, a lot of the mountains that we see are, are just the leftover wars or, or, or whatever in any case they wipe out the bad ones and, and you still have you know a lot of giant creatures that were left over I mean first they're gonna round up the you know equal creatures those are gonna be easier like the horses and, and cattle would be for us to round up and and as it gets smaller it gets harder you know you have giant lizards and and these could be our dinosaurs that spilled over they were harder to catch just like for us you know again we could capture the large animals but you know your mice and your lizards and your uh, 
snakes and your smaller things and your underwater creatures and these are going to be harder to capture and uh, and and yes i mean so so now we have the you know bringing order back you know, we have a bringing of the order back we still have these titan like giants and these could perhaps be you know the the good you know the good angels you know if you have this toroidal field at the base of your building now you can actually pour material, you could pour, say, your concrete over the top. You'd probably want a looser and fluffier material, but, you know, regardless. And you crank up your machine and you create the frequency which now will flower, you know, in the shape of the frequency that you're emitting. And now it could probably push up, you know, you could shape your structure from the bottom and you could push up these concretes and they could solidify and you know really really interesting but if we look over here we do see traces of civilization you know all of this all of this is very very anomalous and you have to look carefully but it's just buried that this is not natural formations and what are we seeing here I don't know let's see if I can get out of here no I can't oops sometimes we shouldn't do things like that okay no it's not gonna let me do that but yeah, just absolutely amazing. The Relief Society in San Francisco, 1920. You know what? We're missing the... I don't know. I don't know what that number is. Let's continue. I don't know. This, to me, almost seems as if it could have been a, some kind of a corpse. Some mud fossil. Something that died and bled out and was mined for its iron and its blood. Really interesting. And here we go again. And this one actually still exists and I'm very excited and cannot wait to take a trip to San Francisco just to see these. These actually exist and I'm so thankful and, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, all the trees were, you know, for instance, meant to be cut down, but then some were left. Some were left, and what we see in Devil's Tower is an example. You know, somebody didn't cut the stump down far enough to where it would eventually get covered with mud and dirt and be almost unrecognizable. And with the case of Antiquitech, you know, a lot was left, a lot was left and, you know, good people may have stepped in and preserved things and, uh, you know. So I'll see you in the next video and have a blessed day. Please like, comment and subscribe.